That leads me to Mr. Hostetler. I know you have some new business that you would like to uh, share with the court. I do as a brief introduction. I, I have a friend that's uh, asked to uh, come and speak to the court. Um, I'll let him uh, <clears throat> make that presentation, but I, I wanted to share first how we met. Um, <coughs> I'm trying to condense this. What's his name? It's, uh, I'll let him introduce himself. It's, it's Teddy Edenstrom. But um, we met uh, through a process where um, <coughs> Teddy is the, is the first gentleman to, to my knowledge that is um, used the net device about a month ago now and uh, <coughs> there, thereabouts. But we met because um, he had called um, Georgetown Medical where he was a client. He had called them with a request he needed help with uh, uh, taking care of his two young sons. And so they because of, you guys know I've shared before with the court that my wife volunteers down there on a regular basis for the last year and a half. And so they called her and asked if we'd been interested in trying to help him. So we were, and so we met Teddy a couple of months ago, maybe three, I don't know the time frame, and uh, be, began a relationship with him to try to help him. And then in that, in that time frame, it wasn't long when the net device got uh, FDA approval, as we're all aware of, and we partnered with the net device folks. And Teddy was, to my knowledge, the first first gentleman to be treated about a month ago now. And in the process, he learned that uh, through that partnership that we paid, because he basically told me when we shared the opportunity with him and how to make the connection and the phone call and the people to talk to to get to go down and take the treatment if he qualified. Uh, he didn't have any money and he didn't know how to pay for it, but I shared with him the program and so I'll leave it. He wanted to come and speak to the court. Hey, okay, Teddy, let uh, me say welcome you, welcome to you, and then hey, kudos to you, brother, for having the courage to, to, to move and I'd love to hear your story. Teddy, will you yes, spell your last name for me? Okay, my, my full name is Theodore Jennings Edenstrom II. Please don't Google that. You <laughs> might, see some, <laughs> you, you might see some pictures that you don't like. But anyway, so uh, um, he, he, was, he was exactly right. Um, so whenever I called, uh, I had already been off illicit substances for about three and a half years, but through the medical, uh, through Georgetown Medical. Uh, but whenever I had whenever I had talked to them, my kids had got dropped off to me at the winter circle. I was living at the winter circle, and um, um, I, I had no. There was no way I was going to maintain a job and have a two and a four year old with no child care uh, assistance or anything like that. So I reached out to the only place that I had gained any substantial amount of recovery since I was 12 years old. So. Uh, <clears throat> um, my 12th trip to the rehab at Georgetown uh, Recovery Works, I decided to go through the methadone clinic because for some reason I couldn't get away from the needle and I had 15 years in heroin use uh, or more. But, um, and I had died 17 times already, it was confirmed. Uh, in 2021, I think it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. But uh, anyway, um, get, uh, I started when I was 12 years old from uh, from from bad childhood with marijuana. Uh, I found out that I could be happy in them sad moments sitting at the Coleman House, man, on Cisco Road in Lexington, when all my friends was out with their family. Um, but it progressed from there, um, and then um, I won't go into all that, but. Um, it's hard to maintain a job when you're dope sick, and um, and so the only way you're going to get money to go and get a fix is to either commit a crime, or 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 sell it yourself. So, which is a crime in itself. So, uh, I, I I did a lot of time uh, behind my drug use and all that, and, um, and 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 it wasn't fun. It became a full time job, um, and. Um, when I met when I met Rick and his wife, uh, it was because um, Georgetown Medical, my uh, my case manager, 
she had saw that I was walking back and forth to View Tech every day from 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the afternoon, and maintain a job. But uh, she knew how close it was for me to like, I was almost at my wit's end because how am I gonna, how am I gonna take her two and a four year old and then still be able to get back and forth to this job? Um, uh, and, and, and I just found myself, man, strung out on 120 milligrams a day of methadone on legal dope, you know? <sighs> but, uh, but I was thankful for that place because that place gave me the foundation I needed to be able to get away from the illicit. But then I couldn't get away from the 120 milligrams of methadone. It would have took me a whole year to dose out. And I, and I was tired of it. One day I was sitting in, I was sitting in the winter circle and I, and, and, and I contracted hep C through all this too, knowingly. I, I knew the woman had hep C. It was the only rig around or needle, so I used it. Um, knowing, knowing that's how, that's how sick it was, but anyway, so I contracted that, man, but through the treatment, I'm like on my sixth week of the treatment, um, it would make me throw up. So I would throw up my dose on the weekends when I had my kids, and then all my kids wanted to do was just love on me, but I was going through acute withdrawal, so I would push them off, and I'd be like, no, go play, go play. One day, man, I was sitting there, I was like, man, that's not being a dad. You know, how come I can't get out of this winter circle? I couldn't get nobody to rent to me. They rent to me on the phone. But whenever they saw me, I mean, but whatever. I mean, I understand all that. But so I, I couldn't figure it out. And then, and then, and then I, uh, I remembered that. And I mean, I ain't trying to get religious or nothing. But in the Bible, it says, "Be a sober mind," or whatever. Um, and being on 120 milligrams of methadone, man, ain't no sober mind. So um, uh, when he told me about the device, I, I had already exhausted every avenue. I've done suboxone. Turn around because because they would give them to me. I'd turn around and sell them for dope, and then I couldn't stay off the dope long enough to do it suboxone. So that never worked. But uh, uh, the maintenance through the methadone clinic did work. But uh, anyway, I was I was just tired. I was tired of being on anything, being dependent on anything. So whenever he told me about the net device, I went, and um, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. There's not like an amount of words that I could ever say to to express my gratitude to you all for allowing me that opportunity. I wish like a whole lot more people would do it. But today I can actually be a dad and it's actually fun. You know, I don't have to worry about uh, being on another substance. Um, I can help other people that are probably only gonna listen to my story because of what I've been through. Um, and, and it's all really because of 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 that of that talk we had at at Wendy's um, and, and this device like and, and really to be honest with you I, I really thought it was snake oil really I, I thought it was and there ain't no way there ain't no way some uh, some device is gonna help me when I had done everything else and I thought I was just doomed I was gonna stay in the methadone clinic forever you know but uh, I went and um, and within and and I got off a hundred anybody that knows about methadone. Um, I have been taking it religiously for three and a half, almost four years, every day, every day. I've been taking 120 milligrams probably for about nine months, every day. And uh, I went there, I had three unopened um, doses, and I went there kind of sick a little bit um, because that's what they suggested. And, um, and, 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 when I, and I got through, uh, I, got, I went from 120 milligrams of methadone and I didn't take it no more when I got there, so there wasn't a taper. But I got off of 120 milligrams of methadone in five days with no diarrhea, no, no nausea, no bone aches. I mean, I sweated a lot, but that was about it. Um, within 20 minutes of that device, man, I was rocking in the chair. On day five, I was shooting basketball. And, and like, now it's been almost a month that I've done it, and, and, and it took me when I when I when I withdrawed off fentanyl, it took me 60 days before I even had a, a solid bowel movement, and about 38 days before I got up off Boone County floor. So methadone's way worse than that. So I shouldn't even be up here talking to you all. That's 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 how remarkable this device is. Um, I've talked to more people about it, and I wish more people would do it. But um, and, and they will, and they will. It's just I, I'm so thankful, and I wouldn't have this opportunity if it wasn't for you all. And, and you all didn't even know me, 
my own family ain't even done that like it's for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I just wanted to come here and just tell you all thanks um, from the bottom of my heart, man, because it, it changed my life. And I got a two and a four year old that, that that's probably happy their dad's back in their life now. So yeah, that's fantastic. And Rick shared a little bit, and he described what you said was like Rick. The net device helped me get rid of the ball and chain of methadone. It did, and it, and, and the helped with the withdrawal, helped with that, and and like thank you for having the courage to come and share, and hopefully others will do the same that you've done. We're going to keep promoting it, and um, you know I know that you're working now, and yeah, I would encourage you to. You know, like the Isaiah House is a continued option. I I'm in it. I'm. Yeah. I, I'm and, and, and I, I, I thought do you were. At the, I thought you were. Yes, yes, Your Honor. I, I do IOP at the uh, Isaiah House. That, um, that, that intense outpatient and, and some counseling. Yes, and, um, because like, yeah, like I, I need that. There might come a time in my life where I need that accountability. I do a drug screen every week, <coughs> every week there, and um, and, and like I know how I know how easy it is for anybody well me um to make that wrong decision and just to have like whatever i can have in place that would help me keep from making that like like say if something bad was to happen in my life or whatever because that's been the story my story um i know that i have to be accountable for what i'm doing you know um and, and i but the biggest thing is like i don't live my life for myself no more man there's like a lot of people out here that like drug addicts really ain't bad people, man. A lot of them, a lot of them really are just ate up with guilt, shame, and remorse for all the things that they've done, and, and they don't know how to get away from that. So they just numb the pain. You know what I'm wow. saying? And then, and then the numbness don't even work no more. Like I used to, I used to do shots of fentanyl, knowing it would kill me unless I got up and started walking before I took the needle out. Like that's how bad it was. And then eventually, the first time I died, I got dizzy at first. But then you don't get dizzy no more. And then next thing you know, you just wake up. By the grace of God, somebody's there to Narcan you. Um, and then the last time Cincinnati found me behind somebody's house on Mitchell in the mud. And so walking wasn't even working no more. I don't even know how I got there. But, but like, all hopelessness uh, had, had disappeared. Like, my, uh, like my, I lost my mom when I was four, and I was abused by my dad. And so I was state raised from 11 to 18. But uh, I don't really want to go into all that yeah. because I know y'all ready to go home. But yeah. I'm just saying, like, hey, mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you, thank you for that. So, we're, we're happy for you. We're pulling for you, and if we can help, let us know. My, Any questions, brother, or comments? You've sir. done won the big battle. Little yes, battles sir. don't mount to nothing no more. You hang in there. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm very proud of you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I want I want to thank the police department because, like, one day. One day I was walking from ViewTech and uh, a police officer pulled up beside me. And even though I was on methadone, I didn't have no warrants or nothing, man, I'm still, I ain't, I, I don't need no ride. But, <laughs> but, but he, was, he was like, he was like, nah, man, you can sit up in the front seat. I still kept my backpack on and I was still ready to <laughs> bounce or whatever, but uh, just old behaviors. But whenever I, uh, he dropped me off at the winter circle, he didn't even ask my name or nothing. And whenever I got out of the winter circle, he gave me a bag. They had Narcan in it, and uh, and a couple of cards, and uh, and it made me feel good because because it gave me a chance to uh, to save somebody if I would have saw somebody. I didn't have no Narcan, but uh, and then that card is probably the best thing that, that that's happening now. It's uh, if you use a loan, man, you can you can call a number and drop your address. And what they do is they call you back like 15 minutes later, and if you're unresponsive, they send somebody to you. And and and, and I mean that's life that's life saving. Yeah. And um, Georgetown Police Department. And yes, see. and it was Georgetown Police Department. I, actually, I got the guy's uh, card in my wallet, but um, I'll show it to you if y'all want to see it. But God bless um, you. It, it 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 gave like I'm used to the police like. Well, back when I was in the mat, like police picked me up, and take me to jail, like, and 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 that was probably the best thing at the time. But what that does to an addict is that makes you have to go through the withdrawals on the floor, and majority of all them people in jails sitting there glorifying the drugs anyway. So you're not getting any real help with it. All you're doing is 
going through all that withdrawal, hoping that somebody in there comes in there with something, or 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 after the withdrawal, all you hear about is how great it was to get high or how great it was to live that life. So so you're filled with all that same stuff. So whenever you get out, man, you go right back to it because you don't know no different. Yeah. And a lot of them don't have no homes or anything like that to go to. So, uh, but anyway, I ain't gonna take well, y'all's time. Thank you for coming, and we're rooting for you every day, day by thank day. You. And thank we you. know it's a daily, a daily uh, venture for you and journey. So God bless you. Yes, sir. Thank God you. Bless thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have anything else after that. I'm not gonna try to follow that. That's God's grace working, and I'm. I'm very thankful for the court having the vision and Rick's beating the drum of, of advocating for it. Any other business? If not, would there be a motion to adjourn? Judge, can, can we adjourn in uh, the memory of Judge Char Judge Executive Charles Macy Tackett? Absolutely. Yeah. Then I'll make that motion. Second. 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 Any other questions? All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Aye. We are adjourned.